Nina Norms. Welcome back to Just Kiss My Frog. And today we're talking publishing, finally. The book publishing industry. Publishing is this huge nebulous beast of an industry I've been in for the last five years and I've l fucking loved it. It's an industry that I didn't always think I'd have access to and it's also an industry that I didn't always think that I would enjoy. This series of sporadic and semi-planned videos um, are intended to answer all of the questions you guys have asked me over the years about publishing. They're in no ways gonna be definitive. They are simply what I have picked up and learned um, and done in publishing so far. But some perspective is better than no perspective and I don't actually see that much video content around getting into publishing online. So I thought this could be useful. Now, before you watch a whole bloody series on how to get into publishing or what publishing's like, you might be wondering, Lena, why the hell would I want to be in publishing? Now that is a whole other video. But in short, publishing is exciting for me because books are still the cheapest way that you can get stories to audiences. You don't need an auditorium, you don't need actors. As far as buying one physical object is, it's the highest ratio of depth and time you can get from a piece of art compared to its price. In its physical form, it's becoming one of the last ways that you can stay away from a screen and really exercise your brain while still interacting with art. And on top of that, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, most bloody films that are good these days are based on books. Books are the beginning of stories. They're often the place that good ideas start. And they're also sometimes the ways that people who have done new research can get their research out to a wider public that isn't academic. And it, it's just really exciting, okay? <laughs> it's also a really interesting industry because it's not like working in any other media industry. In some ways it's quite traditional. A lot of the marketing can be quite word of mouth based and I don't know, liminal. And it's different from, and it's different from newspapers, which I have worked in as well, because it's not this immediate day to day. Quick, what's clickbait? What's gonna be fast? What's happening now? Quick, report it. It's like this slow gratitude, slow burn way of putting a book together and it takes a long time to put a marketing campaign or a publicity campaign together. It takes a long time to write a book, it takes a long time to edit a book. And it also takes the general public a long time to love a book sometimes. And that's what I find interesting. It's, it's also the long-term benefits for a society of having a book out there and when a society discover it. I think compared to any other industry, it's so driven by the people who love it and the booksellers who love it and the readers who love it. And you can put a lot behind a marketing campaign, but if it isn't a good thing, it's not gonna reach that many people. And um, I don't know, I also just love how much time people have to invest in a book. And it's kind of a crazy amount of time in this very immediate world um, that people still wanna put into listening to one character or one story. And also because it's so immersive, I think you can change people's minds easier with books. Because you have to spend so long in somebody else's head and in somebody else's point of view, I think it's the best way, it's the fastest way that you can encourage empathy in a society. Anyway, I'm going off the, I'm going, I need to calm down. Today we're working through some ways I have devised that I've used myself um, that I think you could use to find out whether working in book publishing is for you. Number one, and I did this when I lived back in Coventry, when I was thinking like maybe book publishing is for me and it felt impossible and there was this big rumour going around my university that was absolutely impossible and you know, nobody got into it. Nobody seemed to know anyone who was in it. I went through all the books I owned and um, I often bought books from charity shops back then and I had this big mismatch of stuff that I'd studied at university, stuff that I'd had from school, stuff that I'd borrowed from people, stuff that I'd stolen from people. I went through and I organised them by publisher. This meant I could see what somebody was publishing, um, how their logos had changed over the years, the type of stuff they published, what formats they published in, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed going, oh, that's what Orion do. Virago's logos have really changed over the years. I see what they're trying to do with that book design. It's really interesting. And oh, I think I love that publisher the most because they publish the most amount of books that I own that I love. Grab your books, look at this little logo here, read what it says on this rights page and organize your books that way. Here's an icon book, here's a penguin book, you get the idea. If that bores you and doesn't excite you, might be a nah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Number two, read three books from different genres you don't like. <laughs> Everybody has their own genres. There's genres that they're like, yeah, I wanna go to that. I love magical realism. I love crime. I love nonfiction. I love sci-fi and fantasy. Pick three books, maybe they're bestsellers, maybe they're obscure, from genres that aren't yours. You might hate them, you might have never tried them before, but pick three books read them the whole way through. Was that painful or interesting? Doesn't have to have been enjoyable, but was it interesting? A lot of book publishing, especially in your first few jobs, um, you're gonna be working on books that you might not necessarily buy yourself, but you should take an interest in them anyway. Taking an interest in them doesn't mean that you have to be captivated or changed by them, but it should be an interesting experience for you and you should be able to imagine who might buy that book and how to get to them. If that was painful, 
Maybe nah. <laughs> Number three, spend 20 minutes on the bookseller website. Are you bored? The bookseller website is our industry magazine. They also have a physical edition that comes out every week. Um, because there's that much news in publishing, because it is quite exciting. Some of the articles are behind a paywall, but lots are free. Spend 20 minutes reading some of those articles. They're sometimes about authors, they're sometimes about acquisitions, they could be about publishing houses changing hands, they, they could be about innovations that are happening in the industry, they could be about campaigns that certain imprints are running. If you are bored after 20 minutes of reading those, maybe now. <laughs> La 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 la. Number four, go to some free book events in your area. If it was good, did you come back with butterflies in your stomach? Did you come away feeling different? Did you come away wanting to read more of that author's work? If it was shit, did you feel galvanized to change it? Did you have lots of ideas of how it could be done better? Congratulations, you should work in book publishing. If you came away just a bit bored, a bit apathetic, maybe nah. Maybe not. Nah. And the bonus round, number five, if you can, become a bookseller. Being a bookseller, I worked at Waterstones, um, was a really big way that I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I always wanted to read the blurbs of books from every um, section. I love talking to people about books, finding out why somebody is buying a book at the till, being like, oh, I made you choose this one. Finding out how to persuade somebody to buy a book. Watching which books sold and which books didn't and guessing and understanding why. Understanding shelving sections, understanding what the zeitgeist was and what people were genuinely coming in to look for and ask for. That made me realise that I was not just interested in reading, but I was interested in the practice of making books. This is a bonus round because while there are lots and lots of new independent bookshops opening, which is really exciting, there have been a lot that have closed over the years. So I know it's hard to find a bookshop to work in and sometimes there's not very many places. If you can't find a job in a bookshop, even if you're just working four hours a week, um, I would suggest volunteering in an Oxfam, especially if you have an Oxfam bookshop um, near you or another kind of charity bookshop. You can still learn about reading habits. I always find it really interesting to see which books recurringly turn up in charity shops because they're either the books that everybody thought they'd loved and just gave away or they're the books that everybody loves and that's why there's so many of them in circulation. Working out which one it is is a game in itself. But yeah, I would really suggest that. Okay, they are my five things. They're my five suggestions. Um, let me know if you guys have any other ones that you want to try or maybe you work in book publishing and have tried in the comments below. I will be doing lots of other videos on publishing so please leave your questions below. Thank you for watching. Frog snog out!